Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Part 1 of our G1000 series, coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers! Welcome back! Before we jump into the aircraft, there's a couple things that I would like to go over. The first thing I want to discuss is who this series is geared towards. The first two episodes of this series, we will be going over the very basics of the G1000. So if you are not new to the G1000, you will probably find this portion a little bit repetitive. As we move on in the series, the tutorials will get more and more advanced. Secondly, I want to keep all the videos to 10 minutes or less thus helping you find time to watch the videos and allowing you to retain the information that's given. Lastly, I just have one disclaimer. I am not a pilot, so I will not be going over any procedures throughout the duration of this series. The aim of this series is to help you understand all the functions of the G1000 and how to implement those during your flight. In today's episode, we will be going over all of the basics of the PFD portion of the G1000. If you have any comments or questions along the way, post them down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and SMASH that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. For demonstration purpose today, we're in the SR-22 aircraft. This series is not going to be geared towards any particular aircraft, and we will be using multiple aircrafts that support the G1000 avionics suite. So let's start off in the upper left hand corner of the PFD screen. Here you will see all of our NAV1 and NAV2 frequencies. On the left hand side, these will give us all of our standby frequencies, and the right hand side will be all of our active frequencies. You will also notice around the NAV1 standby frequency, it is marked with a cyan box. That is to allow us to know which frequency we have selected so that we can make our proper adjustments. So now let's take a step over here to the left and go over all the knobs and buttons on the left hand side. At the very top we have our volume knob for all of the nav frequencies. Now you may ask why do we need a volume knob for nav frequencies? This will be used for when we're listening in for the Morse code identifier for the various VORs. We'll get into that more later in this series. Below that we have the swap button. This will allow us to swap between our standby frequency and our primary frequency. Below the swap button we have our nav frequency adjustment knobs. The outer knob is going to adjust everything to the left of the decimal and the inner knob is going to adjust all the numbers to the right of the decimal. If we press in on the inner knob that will switch us between our NAV1 and NAV2 standby frequencies. Below that we have our heading adjustment. So if we move this knob you'll see that the heading indicator on our HSI is going to rotate according to which direction you're spinning the heading knob. Now if you want to automatically sync the heading on the HSI with our aircraft heading all you need to do is to press in on the heading knob and that will automatically sync the HSI with our current heading. So now let's move to the upper right hand side of the PFD screen. Here you will find all of your COM frequencies. On the right hand side these are all of your standby COM frequencies. The left hand side will give you all of your active frequencies. Now a good way to determine which is your standby and which are your active frequencies all of your standby frequencies will always have the cyan box around them and that will help to minimize the confusion between the COM and the NAV side. To the right of the COM frequencies you will find the volume knob to adjust our volume for all of our COMs. Below that we have the swap button and this will swap between our standby and active frequencies. Below that we have our COM adjustment knob. And again, the outer knob is going to adjust all the numbers to the left of the decimal, and the inner knob is going to adjust all the numbers to the right of the decimal. 
If you press in on the inner knob, that will select the alternate COM frequency. Below this, we have our course and barrow knobs. If we take a look at the little legend that they have above these two knobs, as you'll notice that the course is pointing towards the triangular knob, or the inner knob, and the barrow is pointing towards the outer knob, or the round knob. So if you roll on the outer knob, this will adjust your barrow, and if you roll on the inner knob, this will adjust your course on your HSI. Now if you press in on the course adjustment, this will center the course for you. This is not going to set the course to our current heading. Below that, we have the range and pan knob. This is going to be used to pan around or zoom in or zoom out on any of the maps that we can populate on our PFD. Below the range and pan, we have six soft key buttons. Starting on the left, we have a direct to button, a flight plan button, a clear button. On the top right, we have a menu, procedure, and an enter button. Below that, you will notice an FMS knob. These two knobs will be used to control all the functions inside of these menus. So let's start off with the menu button at the top right. When we click on this, this will give us some options to adjust the lighting on our PFD and MFD screens. To scroll around through the menus, you will use your outer FMS knob at the bottom, and the inner knob is going to adjust the various settings. Once you have that selection chosen, you will then hit the enter button over on the right hand side and that will select it for us. Below that we have a procedure button. Now this is going to be used for once you have your flight plan entered, you can select a procedure right from your PFD screen. By selecting this, this will give us a couple different options. Again, you will use the outer FMS knob to select and when you have your selection highlighted, you will then hit the enter button to move forward through the menu. Now because we don't have a flight plan entered, we're not going to have any information in this box. We will go over this in a later episode when we get into flight planning. Moving over here on the left, we have our Direct 2 button. If we press on that, it will open up the Direct 2 menu, and here's where we can enter an airport, a waypoint, a VOR, or an NDB. This will give us a direct course in our FMS for our autopilot to follow. Now we have a couple different ways in which we can enter this information. The first way is to use our FMS knob at the bottom and again the outer knob is going to scroll through the different selections. The inner knob will adjust the selection itself. So highlighting our direct to waypoint we can then use the inner knob to start selecting our waypoint. Now if for some reason you mess up you can just hit the clear button and it will clear all of that information for us. The second way in which we can enter this information is pressing on this little keyboard icon and then we can use our keyboard to type in the identifier. Once we have our identifier selected, we then need to hit the enter button over here on the right. That will highlight the activate tab at the bottom of the direct to menu. If we hit enter one more time, that will now put a direct course in our FMS for our autopilot to follow. Below the direct to button is our flight plan button. Pressing this will show us our active flight plan. Now you will also notice at the very top of this flight plan that we have the direct to to BWI that we had just did earlier in the direct to menu. But notice at the bottom, we do not have any origin, en route, or destination entered. I want to show you how you can scroll around and navigate this menu. You're going to do that with the FMS knobs at the bottom. Again, the outer knob will take you through the different selections. Once you have the selection highlighted, you can then use the inner knob of the FMS to start scrolling and enter your waypoint or destination airports. Again, you can use the keyboard function at the top. Once you have your selection entered, We'll then hit the enter button on the lower right. It may give you some options. You can then use the inner scroll knob to scroll through those. Hit enter again and one more time to accept. If you would like to delete any part of this flight plan, you would just need to highlight what you would like to delete. Hit the clear button and then it's going to ask you again, are you sure you want to do this? We can then hit enter for OK. And as you'll see, it has now dropped off. 
So now let's go ahead and take a look at all the soft keys at the very bottom of our PFD. Starting over here on the left hand side, we have our map HSI button. If we tap on this, this will give us some options for our HSI. Now, as you'll notice, most of these here are grayed out, so we don't have the use of those, but we have a layout we can tap on. Once we do, we have a couple different options here. We can choose an inset map over here on the right. We can also choose an HSI map in the very center of our HSI. Now, this is all going to be personal preference, so you can use what you like here. But right now, we're going to keep the inset map on. Now, before we move any further, I want to go back over to the range knob that I went over earlier. This knob is going to be used to zoom in and zoom out of our various maps. If we press in on the range knob, it will now give us a pointer on our map. This will allow us to pan around on that inset map any direction that you would like. Once you're done panning around, we can just press in on that pan knob one more time and it will recenter the map for us. So now let's go ahead and turn the inset map off. We'll hit the back button, back one more time. Now we can move over to the PFD options. If we tick on this, we have several different options here. Starting over on the left is our SVT or our synthetic vision that's going to be displayed on the PFD. If we tick on the terrain tab, you'll notice that our synthetic vision goes away, but I prefer that, so I'm just going to leave that on. Next to terrain, we have a heading label. If we take a look at the PFD screen, at the very center above our flight director, we have a horizontal line that goes all the way across the screen. Above that line, we have a heading indicator. As you'll see as I'm turning on and off the heading label, that indicator will populate and go away. Once we're done here, we can hit the back button. To the right of SVT, we have a wind option. This is going to allow us to choose multiple different options to display the wind information. Now because we're on the ground, you'll see here that it shows us that we have no wind data to display. Personally, I use option number three. Let me know what you use down below in the comments. Once we're done here, we can hit the back button. Next over is our DME button. If you press on that, this will give us our DME for NAV1. We can also set this up for a NAV2. I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit as we get down the line here. So let's keep on going. To the right of DME, we have bearing one and bearing two. If we start pressing on bearing one, you will notice that we start scrolling through NAV1, NAV2, ADF, and lastly, our GPS. Now, if you have this set up for GPS, this is gonna show you the very next waypoint in the sequence of waypoints on your flight plan. If you have this set up for NAV1, NAV2, or ADF, this will show you specifically that VOR or NDB that you have programmed in. Another thing that this will do is it will give us some DME information as well as the bearing or the heading that we need to go to get to that waypoint VOR or just general location. The other thing that this does is it will give us an alternate arrow inside of our HSI, usually colored in cyan. It will be the same color that will be displayed right next to the waypoint. So as you see here, it says GPS and an arrow. Now if we move over to bearing number two and start scrolling through to add another piece of information to display, you will see here that the arrow that's gonna be shown is gonna be the same color, but it's gonna be a different shape. Or style. So let me take off bearing number one and you will see the difference in the arrow. To the right of the bearing we have our altitude units for our barometric pressure. So if we tap on this we can either select inches or kilopascals and you'll see that change right here. We also have the ability to change for meters and it will show us our feet altitude as well as meters underneath of that. Once you're done here we can hit the back button to the right of that, this is the standard barrow pressure. So once you get above 18,000 feet, we can just hit that. And now you can see standard barrow has been displayed on our altimeter. If you want to switch back, we just need to hit the standard barrow one more time, and it will switch back to our normal altimeter reading. It will also revert back to the main menu at the bottom. 
And as you see, if we go back into PFD options, that was our last option. To the right of our PFD options is our OBS button. We'll get into this in a later episode, but for those of you who want to know what OBS stands for, it stands for Omni Bearing Selector. To the right of that is our CDI button. This is going to be used to select which navigational source our autopilot is going to follow. So as you see on the screen here, we have set for VOR1. We press it again, we have LOC2. And if we press it one more time, we are now set for GPS. So what that means is our autopilot will now follow our GPS course. To the right of the CDI button is our ADF slash DME button. This will allow us to switch our DME information over here on the left between NAV1 and NAV2. It will also allow us to input our ADF frequencies. So if we tap on this, it will open up a menu for us, and at the very top, we can enter an ADF frequency. To do this, we're going to use our FMS knob at the lower right. Again, the outer knob is going to switch between our selection. The inner knob is going to allow us to select the frequency. Once we have the frequency selected, we can then hit enter, and then we hit enter one more time to transfer that over. Below that is our DME, and this is what's going to be displayed over here on the left. If we use our outer knob to scroll down to the DME box, and this will switch between our NAV1 and NAV2 frequencies to show our DME. And as you see, this is live, so you don't have to hit enter when switching. Now, as far as the ADF and showing DME information for your ADF frequency, that's not going to be displayed over here on the left. To do that, we need to go back down to our PFD options and go to our bearing 1 or bearing 2 indicator. We'll use bearing 2 for this, so we're going to select, select, select until we get to our ADF. Once we're close enough to the NDB frequency, this information will then populate with the DME information here below. You will then also notice a needle populate inside your HSI to show you the general direction of the NDB frequency. To exit the ADF tuning menu, we need to then go back and tap on the ADF DME button one more time. Next to the ADF button is our transponder button. We tick on this, this will open up another menu for us to turn on the transponder or set it into altitude reporting mode. To the right of that, we can select VFR to automatically put us into our VFR transponder. We can also select code and enter a squawk code from ATC. To the right of code, we have the ident button when ATC asks you to ident. Over on the right, we can click the back button when we're finished here. Next to ident, we have our timer and VREF button. So if we tick on this, it will open up another menu for us. At the very top of this menu is our timer. Again, we'll use the FMS knobs over on the right. The outer knob will select through the different selections, and the inner knob will allow us to change that selection. So for the timer, we can select timer up or down. When you choose your selection, make sure to hit enter. We can then select our time. When you're finished there, make sure you hit enter again, and then you can hit the start. And now you see the timer is counting down from the time that we had selected. To stop, we can hit enter, reset. If we scroll down in the menu using the outer knob on the FMS, we can then change all of our different V speeds or turn them on or off on the PFD over here on the left. So for instance, let me show you how that's going to work. Let's go to our VY speed and we'll just go ahead and turn that off. Now you'll notice that the VY speed is now dropped off of our speed indicator on the left side of the PFD. We also have the ability to change these, and this will be live. Once you're done, then we can scroll down to our minimum section, and here's where we can turn them on or off. We turn it on, we only have the option to select barometric for our minimums. Now keep note that when you are using a barrow minimum, that this is going to be an MSL figure. Once you have that selected, we can then use the outer knob to scroll over to the feet and then select how many feet you want for your minimums. Again, make sure that this is going to be an MSL number. Once you're done in this menu, we can then hit the timer reference button at the bottom and that will disappear. To the right of timer, we have the nearest menu. 
And if we tick on this, this will bring up all of the closest airports first, and they get farther away as we scroll down to the bottom. To scroll through these menus, we're going to use the FMS knob on the right hand side, and we'll be using the outer knob to scroll through these. Now, this menu can be very helpful, especially in an emergency situation. For example, let's say you just had an engine out and you need to hurry up and make a direct course to the closest airport. We can highlight the next closest airport. We can then hit the direct to button. As you see, it'll bring up all that information. We'll hit the enter and then enter again to activate. And now we're on direct course right to that nearest airport. The other thing that this can do for us is if we go down and highlight the comm frequency, if we hit enter there, it will also switch our standby comm frequency for us. So now all we have to do is hit the swap button and we are now set up on the comm frequency for that airport. Once we're done with this menu, we can hit the nearest button and that will go away. Lastly, we have the alert button over here on the right. So if there's any problems, any emergencies, any messages, they will be here in the alert menu. So now that we have gone over all the different buttons on the PFD, I would like to go over a little bit more of the display that's on the PFD. So at the very top of your PFD in the center of the screen, this is going to be our autopilot panel. All of our autopilot information as to what's going on with the autopilot will be displayed here. Over on the left hand side, this will be our speed. And then we have all of our VREFs here below. Below the speed, we have our, I believe TAS is true airspeed. On the right hand side of the screen, we have our altimeter. At the very top will be our altitude selection. Below that will show our current altitude. To the right hand side of the altitude will be our vertical speed indicator, whether we're going up, down, or level. In the center of the screen at the bottom will have our HSI. At the top left of the HSI is our heading. Below that is our current wind information. In the top center of the HSI is our current heading. And on the top right is our distance to track. Right above the HSI, you will see the flight director. And above that... Alrighty, folks, that's going to wrap us up for today's episode. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments, and I'll get right back to you. If the video helped you out today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you would like to see part two of the series, click up here if it's available. Thanks for watching.